Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. And in this one, we're gonna be telling you guys how to fish Kokanee Deep without a downrigger. Okay, so depending on the lake that you guys are fishing, sometimes those kokanee can be 20, 80, 150 feet deep. So what I wanna do is I kinda wanna walk through the gear and the rod and the reel that you're gonna wanna use to be able to be efficient at catching those kokanee down deep without a downrigger. So first off, it, we're gonna start with the rod because contrary to popular belief is, you know, having a kokanee rod that's the lightest, whippiest thing that bends all the way down to the tip is actually not what you're gonna want for this application and here's why. Sometimes you're gonna use three, four, five ounces of lead to be able to target those kokanee deep. And if you're loading up a rod with four ounces of lead and it's taking all the bend out of the rod and it's maxing it out all the way to the handle, when the fish grabs the line, you're not gonna have any additional shock absorption of the rod and you're gonna end up losing a lot more fish. I mean, these fish are super soft mouths and we all know that routine if you've been a kokanee fisherman at all. So, you want a rod that's gonna be designed for it. So what I've got here, I've got an eight foot, four to eight pound rod that's that says it's built for an eighth to three quarter ounce, but it's actually got a little bit of backbone and it's a little bit heavier, so it can actually be able to use these larger leads. And then also when the fish grabs it, it still has some shock absorption to keep them on the hook. Let me show you what I mean by that. So here's my kokanee rod right here. And I'm just gonna grab on the tip and I'm just gonna pull on it. Now, with three or four ounces of lead, it's gonna load the rod but when a fish grabs it, I still got a lot of give in the rod. So basically I still have a really soft rod, but a rod that actually has some power. And just like any kind of salmon fishing or trout fishing, there's one thing that we're always trying to achieve when we're catching a fish anywhere, and that's tension on the line. If the rod's maxed out and the fish quickly moves one way or another, and the weight's maxing out the rod, you're immediately getting slack on that line. And those kokanee, they just shake their heads real hard and real fast, and they're able to actually get rid of those hooks pretty easy. So you wanna always make sure you keep tension, but you have some shock absorption. Now, the setup that I'm gonna use for this application for targeting them deep is I've got my braided line, which is 30 pound test, and depending on the lines you guys use, it's really gonna affect on how much lead you're gonna add. If I'm using a thicker monofilament, if I'm using a 10, 15, maybe a 20 pound monofilament, it's gonna take more weight to get down and stay at those levels than it would be if I'm using like a very thin, tough line or excuse me, a braided line. So basically, I, as much as I wanna use the lead to get down to the fish, I still wanna use the least amount to get down to the fish because it's more enjoyable to fight the fish. And like I said, it doesn't load the rods up as much. Keeping that shock absorption is really important. So, braided line. And then what I got here is I've got just a slider that's going up and down the line. And this is where I'm gonna attach my lead, which you got right here. And then I've got either a bead chain or a swivel or something that's gonna prevent twist from when, I really, when I'm really in the dodger and the dodger's spinning. I don't want the twist to kind of go up the line. And so I've got some kind of bead chain or a swivel right here. Now, this is really, 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 really important when it comes to actually catching kokanee with these dodgers, is I've got a length of line here in between the swivel and where the lead's gonna be and where I've got my dodger. Now this happens to be a Brad's Kokanee Dodger. I'm a very big fan of these, a very effective Dodger. It's a nice heavy weight, works real well. This thing is gonna need to swing side to side to be able to track the fish in. If I have this tied too close to that swivel, it really deadens the action and deadens the thump of these Dodgers. So what I wanna do is have a minimum of a three foot length between that swivel and this Dodger. So this can swing freely and be able to hopefully attract more fish. Now the line that I'm using in between these is just a 12 pound fluorocarbon, but you can honestly, you can use any line right here. You can even continue to use your braid because the fish tend not to spook from the line that's in between the lead and the dodger here. So any length of line, I use a little bit heavier line than I got on my leaders, just so I, don't, I can avoid a breakage if I snag something on the bottom and I don't lose my dodger. Now behind my Dodger, I've got whatever kokanee lure I want to use. This happens to be a Brad's kokanee cut plug, but I mean, this could be a spinning glow, a hoochie and a spinner, anything that you guys want. So as always, I'm gonna put my corn on my hooks here, because we all know kokanee love corn. So I added my corn to my KCP right here, and now I'm gonna deploy my gear. 
And the only one big disadvantage I, you have when it comes to fishing the lead on your lines is you gotta deploy the gear really slowly. If you just zip the gear out, the lead falls too fast, the flasher comes up, spins around the main line, and ends up tangling and causes a big mess. So you gotta be real slow and real purposeful when you're letting out the line. So as you can see, that Dodger is able to swing completely free and it's putting a lot of great action on that kokanee cup plug and that corn is just a shaking away. That's what you're looking for. So now it's time to deploy the gear. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my gear in the water. I always tell my clients to reel it up and take one more look at it just to make sure that the chain where the lead is hanging is nice and straight, the dodger's doing what it's supposed to be doing and the hooks aren't tangled up on the lure. Everything is nice and clean. And now I'm gonna let it down slow. And I mean slow. I'm gonna let it down a few feet and then I'm gonna pause. And every time I pause, it's gonna allow that dodger and that lure to get pushed back just because I'm trolling forward. So the dodger is gonna get pushed back behind the lead and then I'm gonna let out a little more line again. And then I'm gonna let out a little more line again until I've reached my achieved depth. So right now on this particular lake, we're targeting 50 to 60 feet and we've been out here fishing quite a bit. So I've already kind of got them kind of dialed in that basically what it is is a fishing four ounces of lead at 80 feet back on my line counter reel has been keeping my stuff in the zone. There's a couple very important variables when it comes to staying consistent at depth when you're trolling kokanee. First things first is all having a line counter reel is extremely important because if you don't understand where those fish are at on your electronics and you're seeing them, and once you do get a bite on a leaded line, you can match that with all your gear. So in other words, if I let it out to 80 and I don't get bit, I might give it a little while and then I might put it out to 100. Oh, then I'm starting to get bit. Well, now I can do 100 on all my line counter reels. So like I said, a line counter reel like the Akuma Low Pro, having those in your arsenal is extremely important. I can't say enough about that because you're gonna get that same line out every single time. Once I've got my distance back established, the second most important variable to fishing these kokanee at depth is my speed. Because if I'm trolling at 1.2 miles an hour, the line angles are gonna sit a certain way. If I speed up past that, it's actually gonna create drag on the line and drag on the gear, and it's gonna lift that up even further. Or if I slow down, it's gonna drop that depth down. And you can actually end up really moving those lines up and down quite a bit with just you know a couple 0 0.2, 0 0.3 extra miles an hour of your speed, it's gonna end up doing that. So if I'm trying to stay consistent and the fish are staying there, I've gotta pay attention to not only how much line I have out when I'm getting bit, but I also have to be looking at my speedometer and making sure that I keep trolling that consistent speed when I'm getting bit. So I've got my rod set. I'm actually using four ounces of lead, which is quite a bit for a kokanee rod at 90 back, and I'm going 1.2 miles an hour. As you can see that if I was to get a bite here, I've got still a lot of shock absorption on that rod for if that fish was to grab it, and hopefully it'll stay on the hook. Okay guys, so let's say you're on one of those lakes that allows you to use like a two pole endorsement, or if you're fishing with a couple friends and you wanna try to like put a lot of rods at depth, but you don't have downriggers. Now you can all run, let's just say I'm getting bit at four ounces at 80. I'm just gonna throw some numbers out. It's pretty easy to adjust from there once you find a consistent bite because what you can do is you could add like five ounces at 60 or you can start going like three ounces at like 100 or 120. But you, could add, you can adjust that weight and then you can either add or take away a little bit of distance on your line counters and you can hopefully get a few more rods. And so what you can start doing is actually fishing your front rods with a little bit heavier lead and a little shorter line and the rods out the back of the boat with a little lighter lead and a little bit more line to kind of spread them out, but you can still have this gear at depth. There we go. Oh, look at how much that rod is able to bend and still have a fish on it. Net him, Layden. Net him, Layden. You missed him, Layden. Net him, Layden, here we go. <laughs> Crazy fish. <laughs> so that was four ounces at 80, so now, Take a look at my speed. I'm going one, two, one, three. I'm gonna go four ounces at 80 again and just keep replicating that and hopefully catch more fish. All right guys, so there you have it. There's some tips and tricks on how to fish kokanee at depth without using a downrigger. Do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you guys are looking for a great kokanee trip, look up Gone Catching Guide Service. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the water.